right, this is Charles Tyler here, the Charles Tyler Show, coming to you live and direct here, right down here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, but I'm coming to you from um, Barajuca. Barajuca, we have the Shopping Village Mall. The Shopping Village Mall, and as you can see, it's a beautiful setting here. I mean, if you can turn the camera just a little too bad real quick, you can see the beautiful, these beautiful buildings right here. And, nice little river in the back of us right here and all um, and like I said I'm just going over here I've been here now what 30 days Thir over 30 days now about 32 days now and um, you know I'm just reflecting on life you know without being on the run waiting for and ready to chase down an airline fly out of here you know and you know trying to absorb into the expat life and you know my experiences down here so far you know and all uh, and I just have to say that I, I you know a lot of y'all guys probably you know on my last um, live stream on Facebook uh, oh man you lost a lot of weight this is that this is the lifestyle down here man you, you know this is my this is my soda right here Okay, I don't drink soda. Um, you know, I'm always um, drinking water. And, you know, life's elixir, definitely. All right, Charles, I got a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, question number one: What are some adjustments that you had to make in your first thirty days when you first landed in Rio as a full-time expat? Well. You know, for starters, you know I had to change my route. I was originally supposed to be in Fort Delaysia. Okay, so that was coming to Rio directly now, and with the time, I don't have to be on the run all the time. You know, I'm taking my time, doing my videos, doing my work, and everything like that. So, you know, I would say the adjustment for starters is that I'm not on the run as much. You know, you know, and then also as far as health wise, you know, we just had we just getting over the shock and the passing of uh, Mark Lyles. He was one of our members in our Facebook group and everything like that. And he passed away up in, um, you know, Salvador Bahia. You know, it. I've already had the idea of changing my the what I eat down. You know, correct. But being here, it it's that much easier. All the junk food costs more. All right, and all the healthy food costs less. Exactly. I'm eating in small portions, but yet I'm still feeling like I ate a whole day's worth meal, and I can, you know, and you know that right there has helped me healthy and also financially. I don't, I'm no, I'm not blowing money, throwing money all over the place, you know. So you know, I would say health-wise, it's definitely an adjustment. Financial wise has been definitely an adjustment too as well. And the second question that I have for you is um, what difference do you see in living in Bra living in Rio than living in America? Um, what are the, what are the um, things you miss as far as comfort is and non comfort is? All right. The funny thing about it is that some of the stuff I missed wasn't good for me in a way too as well. Like, for example, um, I have a car or a truck, okay? I can just jump in anywhere I want to go, I jump in a car, I'm there. All right, well, what's the, what does that do? That, that takes away the exercise, the extra exercise that I need, that I wasn't doing, is walking, you know? When I was a basketball player, I walked a lot, or ride, or I ride a bike, all right? When I was, you know, especially when I was in my teenage years and I had like a 40 inch vertical. Why? Because I'm walking or riding a bike all the time. And then of course, 17 rolls around, dad throws me the keys to the car, and now I'm driving and I've been driving ever since. Okay? And in the process of that, weight came on, you know, I, when I tore my ACLs and I couldn't play basketball anymore. Um, even more weight came on, but shucks, I got a car, I don't have to walk. Exactly. Okay. And, but in the process of that going on, I'm still putting on more weight, no exercise or anything like that. And these are basic exercises. These are not, 
stuff that you had to go to the gym for. I'm walking so much that I'm just walking to the store or walking to the movies or something like that, or walking from uh, yeah, from from Lemmy all the way to Implemima Beach or LeBron, you know, I'm losing weight. And it's like it ain't no thing. I got the beach right there in front of me and everything like that. And I, I lost a lot of weight doing that. That's one thing. Yeah, and like I said, the other thing is access to more healthier food, like I said earlier. You know, I would say also having a lot of time for myself. Aside from me doing the work with the, you know, with, um, you know, with the black man's option, you know, I've had a lot of time to myself. I've been sleeping eight hours and all that stuff or more. And, you know, I just, the stress level, as you can see, I'm laid back here. And the I stress can see, level, I, could, I could tell the difference. I could tell the difference in, in your demeanor and in your, your actions, your attitude. I could see your stress level is not high at all. And because of that, I'm starting to see my youthness come back. Now I'm 44 years old. And I don't feel, mentally, I don't feel old. I don't feel middle age. But, you know, I'm starting to, you know, life abroad, I'm starting to see the stress level go down. That's why I see guys like Mr. John looking young as hell and they're in their seventies. Another question that comes always in mind that people always ask about you, they, one thing they want to know is like, what were the sacrifices that you had to make in order for you to actually reach to the point where you said, you know what, I'm going to move to Rio de Janeiro, I'm going to start up here. What little sacrifices you had to make? I don't call them little, but I call them huge because anytime you make a move, it's, it's still a huge sacrifice because you're leaving everything behind. The hugest sacrifice I had to make was family. Because, um, of course, they don't want me to come down here. All right? And I wasn't happy where I was. You know, you, sometimes you can't live for family. And it's a hard decision. Because that's yes. your loved ones. Yes, of course. But you got to do things to make yourself happy. And your family, somewhere, somewhere down the line, is they're going to come to see that. My number one critic of my weight is my mother. Okay? Because she's always been a slim woman. Okay? And it's kept her young. She's 77 years old. It's kept her young. You know? But she sees me down here and slimming down, then that's what she likes. Even though she wants me back in the States, but she knows that if I come back in the States, I'm a fat boy. And that's not good because I'll probably be dead before her. Exactly. Okay. You know. She cares about you. She, she cares for your own So she, interest. you know, she bears, bears and granted, and she lets, it, she lets me go. My father, on the other hand, he's starting to come around. Because he was against, ironically, by virtue of the fact that his, his new wife is foreign he's been with her for over 24 years now all right and you know he's starting to see well shucks he's going down there and he's starting to look good and he's happy and so he's coming around you know but being away from family then there's also my kids too my my, my kids they're all over the world themselves my daughter's over in japan you know my son he you know he'll eventually come down or some one day you know so it's mainly to me, family is the one is the one thing that you know that I had to make a sacrifice on. You know, of course, make sacrifices on you know um, having a car and all this other stuff. And, you know, and there's certain things you have to let go to make your moves to make you much more put yourself in a situation to where. You